real thing is preserving history. And there's history in every instrument. When I left Dave Sturgill, we were building instruments, but some would come in as for repairs. Uh, but when I got into it, I had friends that would come to me and say, you know, I have a problem with my guitar. Do you know anything about it? And I would say, yeah, you know, let me see. And, and I just happened to be really good at it. And um, my experience with Dave Sturgill and guys like Wayne Henderson, who were, who were really into making guitars, um, they really, people would come to them and say, I have a problem with this. You know, I just build guitars. Um, I can fix it if you leave it here. Maybe I can get to it in six months or nine months. And I knew there was a niche there. My name's Skip Herman. I was born in Glade Spring, Virginia, to a military family, and I traveled all over the world. I eventually came back here after Vietnam, and uh, I love the area so much. When I met my wife, we decided we wanted to raise our children here, so we moved back here. And uh, when I had gotten out of the military, I met a gentleman named Dave Sturgill. And Dave uh, taught me the trade and uh, got me started. And uh, I've never put it down since. And uh, I've been doing Luthering here now since 1985. Uh, but I, I've always done it during the weekends when I'd come home from work. And, you know, I always kind of kept the craft going and gotten better and better at it. And when I retired, I just hit it full steam. Then I started getting sick with emphysema, and I knew I was going to have to have some help. And I looked and I looked and I looked, and one day I met KT. So I am KT Van Dyke. I'm originally from Whitewood, Virginia, which is in the coal fields of Buchanan County. Um, been here in the Tri Cities, Abingdon area for, I guess, about eight, nine years now. I uh, came here studying music, primarily as a musician. Worked numerous jobs, working on the road, doing sound with uh, several bands, and was working at Front Row Music, met Skip, and uh, I've always been really interested in luthier work, uh, more of the repair, building kind of, but you know, nothing is quite as sad, or seemed at that time quite as satisfying as uh, repairing a really old beaten up instrument, giving it new life. So always kind of been obsessed with that idea. We have a lot of people who bring really cheap instruments. My daddy used to have this and we would like to, you know, hang it on the wall, at least make it look like it's playable. And most of the time we can make them playable. Yeah. But the love of fixing the instruments is, I think, premier over making an instrument because you can make the very best instrument in the world and if there's no one out there to repair it then it's like having a Ferrari where there's no mechanic in the world who can fix it. Some of the best materials were used back in in the 20s and 30s and 40s and the craftsmanship was definitely there. Uh, and there's, I guess, there's a lot of romantic nostalgia and the stories of all these instruments. They've been around since, you know, the ones that I'm really into since the 20s and 30s, so closing in a hundred years and all the different hands they've passed to. Uh, it's just a shame that such a thing has to uh, kind of fall to the wayside because of some repairable damages. That's kind of where the, the idea or the obsession with that idea comes from. I have uh, restored 200-year-old uh, harps, uh, old pianos, and I really love doing that. They're awful big. They took up all my shop, and I've decided at one point that I wasn't going to do that anymore, and it made more room for more guitars. I'm very fortunate 
to have found somebody of his caliber, you know, knowledge and skill of what he does, but also just very patient, very patient, patient teacher. Uh, a lot of this stuff is very overwhelming. You know, you get into doing neck resets and even some minuscule crack repair. There's the longer you do it, the more you understand that the, a lot of the consequences to the decisions you make uh, will be felt by the customer down the road. You know, if you don't glue up a crack properly, then that could affect the sound of the guitar. Vice versa with neck resets and all this. So for anybody learning a skill that has that kind of consequence, you know, having a teacher that's very patient is always highly appreciated. He's one of the best pupils I've ever had. He listens. He uh, actually takes what you say to heart. He, he really puts in the time to learn something. Uh, he does his research. It's one thing to learn something from a book and just be able to do it. Uh, which I, I have really known very few people who can do that. Uh, KT seems to be able to grasp that type of situation very well. So I can tell him something, and if he runs into an opposing problem, then he may come back and say, how do I handle this? And I'll guide him in the right direction and he really takes those directions well. Um, and he's really good with customers. He's very, very good with customers. He's going to be very successful, I'm sure. Thank you, Skip. In February, when the apprenticeship is over, uh, I'm going to be turning all my tools uh, and my shop over to KT. KT's moved to Bristol and so he'll probably build a shop there. Um, I'm going to continue to use the cabin as a recording studio uh, and try and get something done when my lungs improve a little. But yes, things are in really, really good hands. It's in excellent hands.